Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. So in today's video what we're going to be going over is how to create an orthographic camera with proper controls as well. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So if we get in you can see we have this nice orthographic camera here and if I'm pressing W I am actually going forward in the direction the camera is facing not the direction the player is originally facing. But also let's say if I were to go here I can't see the player anymore. So if I were to press Q or E, I can then switch between where the camera is facing and again, the player is still going to move in the correct direction you'd expect them to be moving by pressing W, A, S, D based upon which way the camera is currently facing. So this is what we're going over today, creating this proper orthographic camera with the proper controls for it as well for any game you want to make and you can customize how the camera is going to look as well so it can look better if you want as well. This is just a very quick setting that I put on here as we're mainly focusing on the controls as well today as obviously just setting up an orthographic camera is simply one press of a button but if you want to customize it to be a proper orthographic camera with controls this video is perfect for you as well. So this is what we're going to be making today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So what we're going to want to do is open up our character blueprint. So for me, that's going to be control space to open the content browser, go to content, third person, blueprints, and I'm using BP third person character. We're going to go straight to the viewport in here and this is how you would normally have the character set up for third person. So if I were to press play, you can see that we have the normal third person controls like this. But that's not what we want. So what we're going to do is select the follow camera. We're going to change the projection mode from perspective to orthographic. If we hit compile and save, that is simply all you need to do to create an orthographic camera. So we now have it like this. However, again, this isn't perfect. You can still move the camera. It's really zoomed in. The controls aren't what we want. So we're going to go and change that now. So to change the zoom, you can change the ortho width. What I had in the start was on 2K, so 2048. So if we compile and save and press play, you can see this is kind of the level of zoom that we have for that. Now you can completely customize and change this as much as you like, but that's basically how you're going to change the zoom. And the near clip plane and the far clip plane are essentially, as you can see when we're moving about, different meshes are going to be clipped so that we can still see what we need to see properly. So you can customize those as well to change where that clip plane is going to be. But that's the basics of creating the camera itself. So we want to now create some of the controls. So what I want to do first is have it positioned in a certain place and make sure the player can't move it. So to get it positioned, what we're going to do is select the camera boom and we're going to move that instead. We're going to change the target offset. So I'm going to set the target offset to be 0, minus 400 and then 300. You can customize this however much you like, but this is what I found to be quite good for my own testing and this is also what I was using in the overview at the start of the video. But again, change these values to be whatever you like. And then we want to select the camera and change where it's facing, so it's facing the correct way. So the rotation is going to be 0, minus 25 and 45. So it's at a 25 degree angle pointing down and a 45 degree angle looking to the side as that is the kind of traditional orthographic camera you'd expect to see as you can see perfectly here. So this is now what it is going to look like. However, you'll notice now if I'm pressing W, it's going to go straight forward and A, S and D like this, which is not what we want. And then also I can still move it. And this is obviously a little bit sickly. And again, you really don't want this. You don't want to be able to move the camera anyway. So the next steps for disabling the camera movement are we're going to go back to the camera boom and untick everything under the camera settings. So use pawn control rotation, inherit pitch, your enroll, untick all of those. Now if you compile and save, we can see that no matter what I'm doing, I can't actually move the camera at all like this. What you could also do if you wanted is go into the event graph and then disable the camera input so that you then also can't move the player using the mouse. And so I'm going to do that as well. Now go back to the viewport. That is basically all we need to do to set up the camera itself being the correct position we need and also a little bit more of the controls so you can't control the camera. But now let's go into the player movement and then also rotating the camera as well. So let's go to the event graph to do that. We're going to go down to the movement input we have down here and what we want to do 
is we want to come out of the get control rotation your so the Z and we're going to get an add float we're then going to right click in the bottom add promote to variable and we're going to name this one camera offset and the reason I'm doing it as a variable here is because again we're going to be rotating the camera in this system so we want to make sure that we change this and update this every time we update the camera so we'll compile that and we'll set the default value of the camera offset to be 45 or whatever you have the Z value in here at the moment on your rotation so for me it's 45 so we want to set the camera offset to 45 as well and then that addition is going to go into the in Z of the get right vector simple as that really nice and easy and then what we can also do is move this over just to then give us a little bit more space so it looks a bit nicer and more organized and then we're going to do the exact same thing for the forward backwards as well so we'll move it over come out of the Z get an addition node adding it into there and what we're going to be adding to is the exact same camera offset variable so we don't need to create a new one we can just use the same one perfectly like so and that is all we need to do in order to be able to have the player move where we want move forward backwards left right relative to the camera itself so if we press play now we should see that when I'm pressing W we are actually going forwards backwards left and right relative to where the camera is currently facing so this might be fine for you you might want to leave this as it is for now for your own orthographic camera however I want it to be so I can press Q and E or whatever buttons you want to then move the camera to face a different direction so I can see if the player goes behind something like this and that is also very simple and easy to do so we'll do that now back in the event graph again we'll just find some empty space to do this code what we want to do first is create a new variable I'm going to name this one camera position and this is going to be an integer so this isn't actually the position of the camera it is more the index so if that makes more sense you can do camera position index but for me I'm just going to do position I'm then going to hold control and get this compile that and I'm going to set the default value and out of this we're going to get a switch on int perfectly like so now for me I'm going to have four different camera positions as I want them to all be at a diagonal so I'm going to get four pins so we'll have 0, 1, 2 and 3 and that will be the same index that we're going to have on this position here 0, 1, 2, 3 and then off of these we want to just set the different positions the camera can be in so I've already found out these values from again doing my research earlier but I will show you how I got those values so you can create your own ones as well but what we're going to do first is set it up with the ones we have at the moment so we're going to get the camera boom out of this we're going to drag and then set target offset simply like so and then we're going to get the follow camera out of that we're going to set relative rotation and then what we also want to do after this is also set the camera offset here set as well so we're going to be moving where the camera is moving the rotation of the camera so it's facing the correct way updating the camera offset so that the movement is perfect as well so I'm just going to move these over a little bit to create some space for us and then we're going to input the values for our first index so what I'm going to put in here is the position that the camera is currently in so to find that out we can click on the camera boom and then have a look here you can see the target offset here we can do that in here 0 minus 400 and 300 perfectly like so the relative rotation of the camera if we select it we can see it's 0 minus 25 and 45 we do that again 0 minus 25 and 45 and then the camera offset just wants to be the Z value of the rotation of our camera which as you can see here is 45 so all of this is the position that the camera is currently in so I want to put this into three of our camera position index as we don't want to start going through the index at the beginning so when we go through all of them it's going to come back around to this final one starting in it again so what I'm going to do is set the camera position integer to be 3 as again this is where we're starting we're starting in position index 3 so we want to make sure that we update that in the code as well so what I'm going to do now is select this and copy and paste them so that we can then do it for all the other indexes and make sure that we connect everything into the camera boom and the follow camera and also connect it into the switch on int as well and again copy and paste this another two times so we have 0 
one, two, and three for all of these here. And I'm just gonna move these about a little bit to keep them a, a bit more nice and organized. And I think that should be good and fine for me. So again, I've already got the values, but I will show you how I've done them. So the first one for me is zero. I've got the target offset as zero, 400, and 300. The relative rotation is minus 25 and minus 45. And then the camera offset is obviously minus 45. So the values which are always going to stay the same are the Z of the target offset and the Y of the relative camera rotation. So let's compile and go to the viewport. What I'm going to do is select the camera boom here and if the target offset for this position is minus 400, we're obviously going to want one of them to just be 400 so it's on the complete opposite side. And then if we get our follow camera we want to make sure that it's facing inwards towards the player so instead of 45 we'll do minus 45 as we've just flipped it to the other side. Really nice and simple. And then to get some of the other values, what we're going to do is we want to move it with one from here to here. Now we want to go to here. So we're just going in a kind of square around the player. We again just want to flip it to the other side. So we now need to modify the X as well. So this will be 800 as we want to go all the way over, not just into the middle. And then we can leave this as 400 here. And again, the camera is now instead, we want to face in. So instead of minus 45, it's going to be minus 135. And now, obviously, I'm not noting down these values as I've already noted them down. However, if you are doing different values to me, when you find a position, for example, the position I've just found now, you want to input it into the correct position here. So obviously, the first one was zero, then one, then two, then three. Okay, so you want to make sure that you're noting all of those down. As I've already got them and I've now just shown you how you can get them for yourself if you're doing different values, I'm going to reset it back to my initial position like so and then give you all the values which I am using. So we'll compile, save that, go back to the event graph. So we've done the first one, it's 0, 400, 300, minus 25, minus 45, minus 45. That is under the index of 0. Index of 1 is going to be x of 800 and a y of 400. Then the rotation of the camera will be 0, minus 25, minus 135, and then the camera offset again is the same as the Z, so it will be minus 135. Then index of 2 is going to be 800, minus 400, 300, 0, minus 25, 135, and then the camera offset is 135, and we've already done the last one here. So you can pause the video now if you need to copy these down, but as you can see it's very simple. 400 minus 45 minus 45 and then one of them is just the opposite of that so it's minus 400 45 45 and then we also have 800 400 minus 135 and then the opposite 800 minus 400 and then 135 so i know i've just spouted out a lot of numbers there so sorry if that's a little bit confusing but i hope that does make sense as again i've shown you how you can get these values for yourself if you're doing it differently to me so now we just need to be able to go through this index of the different camera positions on Q&E. And that is also very simple. We'll right click and we'll get to the Q keyboard event, like so. And then we will, under this, we'll get the camera position and get an equal equal. So if this is equal to a certain value. And for me, Q is going to be going down through the list, so down through the index. So I want to see if it's equal to zero. Because if it is, we don't want to go to minus one we want to go back to the top of the list, which is three. So this will go into a branch, so you can hold down the left click to get that branch like so. I'll just move this over a little bit to give us some room. If it is equal to zero, like I say, we want to then set it to three instead of minusing one again. So we'll set the camera position up to three, like so. If it's not equal to zero, then that means we can continue decreasing it. So we will get the camera position and get a de decrement int, which will just subtract one and set it perfectly like so and then both of these just want to go into the switch like so which is already connected up with the correct value of the camera position which we've just set here and now the reason why we're not setting them here for example 0 1 2 3 or 1 2 3 0 is because that would just be going through one way we want to be able to go forwards and backwards through the list so the player doesn't have to go around in a full circle if they went one too far so this now allows us to decrease. So now we want to increase. So we can just copy all of this and paste it down here. 
select the cue and then change it to be E, which if you don't know the shortcut for that, you can just press the little keyboard icon there and then press the value that you want. And now we're going to be seeing if it's at the top of the list, so instead of 0, we'll see if it's equal to 3. If it is equal to 3, we want to set it to the bottom, so 0, so it's again gone all the way through the list and now it's reset. And then if it's not equal to 0, we can increase it, so we want to get an increment int instead of a decrement, so we are increasing the value perfectly like so. Again, I hope all of that makes sense. We can connect that up into this rewrite node that we've got here, and then I'll just move this a little bit to make it a bit more neat and organized as per usual. And that is all we need to do. Let's just select all this and move it, and I'll hit C to comment this saying, go through camera position index. And that will now be updating the camera position, camera rotation, and the camera offset for our player movement. So now if we have to compile, save that, minimize and hit play, we should see that we're in this position. If I move the mouse, that's not moving the camera. I can move the player like so and it's going the correct direction that I want. So holding W goes this way. If I press Q, it is then moved the camera position and holding W and holding D goes sideways, W forward, etc, etc. If I press E and again, it always goes through like this and Q the other way. And again, let's test the positionings of the movement. So I hold W, press E, W, E, W, E, W, all the way through like this. It is working perfectly for what we want. So we have now created a true orthographic camera system with the proper camera settings, camera positioning, and camera controls. So we can move the camera a little bit like this instead of moving it with the mouse. And that'll also have the proper controls for movement as well that we want. So I think that'll be it for this video, as we've done everything we've wanted to do. What we've done is we've set up the true orthographic camera as I've just spoken about there, and I think this is absolutely perfect using the new orthographic camera system in Unreal Engine 5.3. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please do make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.